So there's a couple of things I'd uh, like to talk about today. Three things specifically. Um, I'm first going to show some basic Nuke workflow on how to set up a shot in stereo, just to get everyone on board in the Nuke workflow and what we're actually going to be looking at during the day. So um, specifically, it's, it's um, this shot we're going to be th um, going through. And the next thing is we'll be going through some of the issues compositing-wise you probably will be facing when you're working with stereo plates. And the third is I'm going to go through this specifically shot with a, with a practical example of how to fix some of the, uh, some of the more common issues that we have. Um, so let's just start with the new workflow. So I loaded both the, both the eyes, the left and the right one. And you can see there's a lot of color discrepancies between the two, and that's something we'll tackle um, a bit later on. So Nuke has a pretty nice workflow for doing stereo work, which is what we use on Avatar. And the way to get started on the shot is you can hit S on the keyboard, switch to the view setup. And there's a button here, down here called Setup Views for Stereo. You can set that up and use colors in the UI quite like that. That gives you the option of switching between the left and the right eye. But right now, they're both separate streams. So the first thing you need to do is actually combine them to one. And there's a node in Nuke called Join Views. And you plug the right one in the right one and the left in the left. When you view that one now, you get the option of switching between the views up here or in the keyboard. There's keyboard shortcuts for this. And basically, it keeps everything inside this one stream. So if you go in and you decide to grade something, let's gain it up a little bit, it happens in both eyes. But you can optionally, when you set up the stereo, you get this little button next to it, which lets you split off the views and you can change your parameters individually. So let's say you want to gain that one down. Now, it might be confusing to have all of that stuff in one node. So there are options of actually just going in and saying, I want to split off one view. Anyway, you can choose which view you want to split, left or the right one. Or there's a function called split and join, which basically does it for you. So for instance, if you do have to make specific changes to one side, you can do that and then it will rejoin the stream further down. If you have additional channels or layers in each one of these, they will actually keep that further down. So if I pipe in a mat at this stage, the mat will be present for both eyes at any time until you remove it. When you save out stuff, it might be worth splitting out the left and the right view, creating a right node, and making sure you're writing only one of the eyes. If you're writing to, to um, EXRs, I believe there's an option now for writing both eyes to a single EXR file as well. So that's sort of the basics of, of how the compositing work inside, inside Nuke in Stereo. It's quite simple. And um, hopefully you all um, agree with that. So here are four shots that we did. And... Um, one of the things that Simon mentioned is, is all, the, all the technicalities when doing on set on how to get the stereo right. Regardless of how much you control, how much control you actually have on the stuff on set, you're still going to end up with a lot of problems in post. Um, some of these problems I've found, I've found on, on other shows as well, other stereo shows. So um, let's just start with, it, with some of the more common problems that, that I've been facing a couple of times now. The first one is, is there's colors, color mismatch between the eyes. And like, um, like so I forgot the name of the initial guy. Andy, Andy sorry, Andy, uh, mentioned even just little subtle things, things, fixing like the color mismatch between the eyes actually helps the stereo effect a lot. Just bringing the plates closer to, to each other just makes the, the stereo kind of work more pleasant. And, um, and some of the color issues can come from, you know, difference between the actual chips in the camera, so or the filters actually being slightly different, or even the lenses being slightly different. So they do actually produce a slightly different result. So you can see one of them is warmer than the other, the other one is a bit colder and a bit greener. So that's one of the things, is the color mismatch between the eyes. And you can, you can fix that with things like the, um, the grade node in Nuke, or the Oculus Match grade node. And I'm specifically going to be talking about using it using a manual grade. And Ben will, I think Ben will be covering Ocular later. 
The second thing is there's a vertical misalignment in the shot. Even though the, the, the rig was, it was a pretty good setup, there's always going to be a little bit, a little bit um, difference between the eyes. So you can see where the, so the, where the mouse cursor is. When I switch between the eyes, that it's actually shifting up and down just a little bit. Even fixing small things like this, the vertical alignment, actually makes the stereo effect a lot nicer. So it's all about you know, fixing the remaining little things that you can't actually do um, on set. And I have, a, I have another point um, to make when it comes to stereo and, and compositing, and that is um, if you've got things in your scene that you need to remove, like Ben, <laughs> who turned out quite nicely in the background, you, you have to do it twice. So there's an additional cost for, for fixing things in stereo. There are various ways of fixing it. I'll be showing some of them. But you know, when you're on set, and especially when you're shooting stereo, don't have your crew in the, uh, in the reflections, please. <laughs> the next one is, um, since this camera rig was shot with a polarized uh, filter in the middle of it, you're going to get quite, quite a lot of um, problems in terms of polarization issues on reflective surfaces and specular highlights. So in this shot, not only do we have um, not only do we have massive color differences between the eyes. Let's just make it a bit brighter for you. Massive color differences between the eyes, but actually, if you look at the uh, the ground floor as well, the wet bits, the polarization actually throws the whole thing quite off, and things like this makes the stereo effect quite quite nasty to watch. So these are things to watch out for, specifically with polarization rigs. Oh, we're mirrored and polarization. The other thing is, if I go to uh, the other thing that somebody mentioned previously was lens flares, and in this case, there's a um, lens reflection on uh, on the image present on on the right eye, but not on the left one. And since you the eyes can visually resolve the depth cue of this thing, so it's better to actually try to remove lens reflections anyway, since they're going to be different for each eye. So reflections is kind of, a, kind of a bad thing to have. The second thing is, I'm not sure if this is the rig or if it's actually just the polarization, but there's, there's quite a bit of sort of refl some kind of soft, blurry reflection across, across this area in, the, um, in this eye. And it, it looks to me like an internal reflection of the actual mirror rig. So you've got to be careful at where you're pointing and how you're pointing the stuff when you're actually shooting it. And this shot is probably quite easy to fix because the camera movement is quite simple. It's a, it's a dolly in. And you can fix most of it with either projections for, for both eyes. So it's not a huge thing, but if you have many shots to fix like this, it's probably going to turn the cost up quite a lot. So that was lens reflections. In this one, you have um, lens flares. Beautiful shot lens flare. The thing is, you can actually have lens flares. They're working quite nice, but you need to make sure the shape don't change from eye to eye. So you can see the starriness of it actually rotates, and since you actually can't see the same thing in both eyes, you might start to struggle with it. So you can actually have lens flares, but I'd rather keep this, the actual shape of them the same and just vary the position of them. Um, high contrast things like, like this reflection, uh, sorry, flare, will probably also cause a little bit of ghosting. So you've got to be a bit careful where you put high contrast flares. And I think you, you, can, you can put a lens reflections back in as well. But, uh, but it's probably better to put them on the zero parallax plane so you actually don't have a sense of depth for where the uh, uh, lens reflection actually is coming from. There's another thing with this one, or this shot. And that is, uh, I don't know if this is a piece of tape or whatever it is, but again, when something is in the, in the eye, in one of the eyes, it's probably in the other one. And you can see it over here, it's moved. So th again, this is additional stuff you'll have to probably fix in post. So there's additional time spent in paint and roto to try and fix some of these things. So it's take extra care when, you, when you're shooting on set. <laughs>